Hey everyone and welcome to this video and in this one I'm gonna uncover the Ultra Street Fighter 2 Sega Art figure by Storm Collectibles. I've got in front of it the SH Figure Arts Sega Art which I covered not that long ago and you can still see straight away that it is tiny in comparison and super orange also in comparison. Now this is the first Storm figure I've actually uh, gonna unbox. I don't normally collect Storm Collectibles any brand actually. Um, big Street Fighter fan, but I just wasn't too keen on the hench look of the Street Fighter stuff. So this is the first one I'm going to do for, for Street Fighter. I do have a Violent Ken, and then separately I've got a Kyo one from King of Fighters, which I'll do an unboxing for. But I was quite keen to check out what this Sagat interpretation was going to be like. So straight away, the box is pretty cool, actually. Now, I like what's going on here with the whole inspiration between uh, by Street Fighter 2, Ultra Street Fighter 2. So you got a background logo with the Street Fighter 2 logo on there. And then even the uh, Sagat name was inspired by how it is in the game itself. So that's really cool. And of course, the profile picture, which is super neat as well. Big window display of what you get in there. So you get the, the uh, losing uh, head sculpt, which you don't get with SH Figures, period. And then you've got a couple of others as well. So overall, this guy looks pretty good in the packaging. Like I said, he's, he's hench already compared to the SH Figures one. Um, so this is the front of the package. And on the side, is his name and then a, pro, a profile picture of him again. That's a cool picture from uh, back in the day. On the back are pictures of the figure itself. Now the reason why I don't particularly really like the Storm Collectible stuff without having gone hands on previously is because they just kind of look too bulky. So guy is a bulky guy but when you get them into poses I just wasn't convinced by them. They just don't look very dynamic when you look at like even the Tiger Uppercut or the Tiger Knee. I'm just not sold by it so I, I, you know, everyone kept raving about it on Reddit, so I thought, you know what, let me get one and see what the fuss is about, so, yeah. But so far, packaging-wise, it's pretty good. I like what's going on with it. It's nothing, like, overly special, but it looks good anyway, just based on the details that they've gone uh, and put effort in. Like I said, the way the name is, for example, that's just a small thing. Um, Supervised by Kiki, it says right here. I'm guessing that's the sculptor, because I believe that was also in another Street Fighter Storm Collectibles 2. But anyway, let's get this thing open and yeah, I'm just very, very curious of what Storm Collectibles can offer. So here's the Storm Collectibles Ultra Street Fighter 2 cigar out of the box. Now it looks pretty good, a pretty hulking beast uh, of a figure. But let me get this first thing out of the way, which is the instructions that it comes with, which is in color featuring cigar on the front. And I'm guessing maybe Storm Collectibles do this for all the other IP as well, so King of Fighters maybe. Uh, we'll find out. But this is, this is nice to have this. It's very rem reminiscent of having actual instruction booklets with the video games itself. Pretty self-explanatory for the most part of how to swap the head uh, using the Tiger Shop and then how to swap his hands as well. Uh, I mean, it's the same sort of information that you're going to get on, say, SH figure art figures, but it's just in a more colorful format uh, versus the plain black and white sheet of paper that you get for SH figure arts. So here's the figure. Let's go through the parts first. So I'm going to get this bit out of the way. So in the back behind him is his Thailand stage. Um, again, similar to the SH figure art stuff, it's just a plain piece of card. It's a much thicker stock though, uh, and just overall a better way to do it because, and then you got the super finish at the back. Um, you can kind of, well, hopefully I can demonstrate that better, how the, the stock of the card. It's better quality than what SHF provide, but again, I'm not a huge fan of them, but yeah, it's there anyway. Then we get an effect part, which for Sagat is his Tiger Shot. I've assembled this in his highest no, high, high mode, uh, high tiger shot for now anyway. So this is the effect piece itself. And then on a segmented shaft, so it's already got one, two, three, four, and then you get two extra pieces right here, like so. Uh, and all you got to do, if you want to do the low tiger one, is just remove a segment. Let's say, let's take two out and then plug it back in here. And there we go, that's it. And it plugs into the base. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the way this has turned out. It's very bib, it's very simple, uh, let's say. Uh, compared to say the Hadouken or the other fireball effect pieces that SH Figure Arts provide, those are very cool. This is, you know, it's pretty standard. It's nothing special, but they've given it regardless. Then for his hands, so he's got the two fists that are already attached to him and he gets karate chopping hands like so. So just to kind of explain as well, Storm Collectibles, I'm new to this, uh, to them in general. This is my first Storm Collectibles unboxing. Um, but the hands aren't like hard plastic that SH Figure Arts tend to use. These are kind of like a rubber, actually. 
Hopefully you can kind of see if I flex it a bit. It's like an eraser. That's the kind of texture that it's it, that I can compare it to. But the actual sculpting of it is quite cool. Let me focus that better for you. Yeah, the sculpting of the hands are pretty cool. You see the, the nails and you know, the creasing on the back of the fingers as well, which is really nice. Uh, and of course, the way the bandages wrap around his hand. Then you get gra uh, grappling hands. The paint on one of them is a bit weird, or both of these actually. You can see it's a little bit weird there, but actually that might add to the nice kind of uh, rough effect of his bandages, you might say. But there's the paint here. Uh, but otherwise, again, nicely sculpted. And then the other hands are uh, more just open as he attacks sort of hands. So again, nice sculpting. Same kind of paintwork that's going on with the bandages and the skin tones. Nice details there. Then finally for the heads. Now he uh, the heads are very, very cool. So his default one is just pretty stoic expression. Then he comes with one where he's gritting his teeth, which is a nice, nice sculpt. The heads overall, I'm just going to say it now, are very, very nicely sculpted. Uh, the, from the eye patch to the scar on his uh, above his left eye, his mouth, the teeth, really, really good. Way better than whatever the SH Figure Arts one was. Uh, it's, it's really nice. The skin tone is quite nice as well. Uh, just overall face sculpt is what you expect from Sagat. That's a nice head sculpt there. Then he gets his iconic laughing one. Uh, I always keep forgetting that he get he has this one included. Uh, but he yeah, it's a great thing that he has it. And you can see his nose arches as well, which is yeah, it's a really nice head sculpt. And then one of the best things about this figure and the Ultra Street Fighter 2 uh, figures in general is having the losing face. So this is when you are on a continuous screen or right, lost. Um, and this is just great. Now, he's not the first Street Fighter figure to have this. Guile has it as well, I think, and E Honda's getting one, and so on and so forth. But it's still a great inclusion to have because it just kind of has that whole, you know, it's it's different. Every figure that we tend to get from other bands, SH Figure Arts, would be kind of what I've just shown you before, the gritting the teeth and you know, a variation, one or two variations. But having a losing, battered look with the blood coming out of his mouth, you know, is... A nice touch and it's a great addition i like the bruised eye that he's got with this default head sculpt it might just be mine um i'm not 100 percent sure because the others don't tend to have that issue is i feel in person sometimes he kind of has this shaved head look this kind of looks like it's got it on this head as well um he kind of has this whole i wouldn't say five o'clock shadow but there's a bit of a shadow to his head that i feel i would prefer it was just full-on plain skin tone rather than a more of a stubble coming, hair growing through, kind of, just my opinion, just my opinion. And sometimes I feel that kind of happens across his chin as well. I think it just depends on what light you've got him in. Um, but that's just a really, really small, small kind of nitpick that I could, uh, if I wanted to say something, that's all I can really bring out for the heads. Overall, heads are super, super solid. But this figure then, in general, if you look at it straight away, he, he means business, he stands out, not just because of his immense height, but the sculpt on it, just look at it. The, the, it speaks for itself, I think. It's a super good sculpt. I've I've seen Storm Collectibles figures, I've just never owned one until until now, and, you know, the sculpt has always been impressive. Um, it was always the posing that I've held back on with, of buying these figures, but having this in hand, the sculpt is super good, super good. Like just to look at his pecs, the scar on his chest as well, it's nicely sculpted. Comparing it with the SH Figure Arts, which you can see my video before, and I'll bring him out later as well, the SH Figure Arts version. This guy is sculpted really, really, really nicely. Look at those back muscles going down to his legs as well. You know, the thighs, calves around his feet too, you know, this is with the bandages too again. You know, toes, underside, I'll give you that, it's not, nothing special on the underside. Shorts. You know, they're fine, they're workable. Um, I prefer how SH Figure Arts do them. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail when it comes to articulation. But I just kind of am in a little bit of awe, you could say, about the sculpt. But before we get into the articulation, I just want to talk about materials as well. So I actually had no idea that Storm Collectible figures uh, weren't solid plastic figures. His chest is what I mean. It's a, it's more of a rubber. It's a, it's a sculpted rubber piece that's attached to him. Uh, all the way up to his neck, that goes into the head. It's all a rubber. This mid torso bit, the stomach bit, abs, and the back, lower back is a hard plastic. And then it returns to a rubber um, up to the, the upper, uh, main part of the shorts, uh, the thong part of the shorts, if you, if you want to call them that, or the trunks even. 
So that's a rubber again. And then it goes back to a hard plastic for the legs. My leg does come off a little bit. Um, usually okay. Put that back on. But it can happen with storm collectibles in general. But it happens with a lot of figures, right? Um, so yeah, back to hard plastic there. Hard plastic for the legs. Hard plastic for the arms. Slight rubber feeling to the fists as well, but not as rubbery as the other attached hands. Um, and then a hard plastic for the, for the heads as well. So very different to what I'm used to. I'm used to just solid plastic or lightweight plastic for uh, all the other you know Bandai figures, for example. So maybe that's why they're able to do something that looks really great and you know of course reduce the weight as well. Because if this was solid plastic, I imagine it would be a lot heavier than it is. Because he's a pretty heavy figure overall. Um, I don't know how I, uh, how I feel about it in general. I mean, it, it's good. It looks great, obviously, like I said. But I think in the long run, I, I just don't know yet. Because, again, this is the first Storm Collectibles figure, figure I've had. And I've kind of heard horror stories with uh, using rubber on figures. Hot Toys, for example, which is like a premium brand. And those kind of figures, the the rubber like creases and cracks. So I'm kind of worried that might happen here. Even though there shouldn't be any reason for that, really. But weather temperature that kind of stuff can can do you know weird stuff to to a lot of materials so that's that's my main reservation about using rubber for part of the sculpt um, but that's the main thing i wanted to point out that was hugely different to me that i've just never experienced uh, in my previous figures so it's different it's very different it has some uh, other cons to it which i'm going to go into uh, right now as we speak to articulation so let's get his arms open first so with his head because it's a rubber bit I have an issue with this head in, in, in general where, let's just take it off. It comes off quite easily um, and you see the neck, like I mentioned, is made of rubber. So in order to get the head on properly, I have to force this down quite a lot um, and then kind of squash the rubber torso or chest down a bit. Um, it's a bit annoying and sometimes if I'm kind of playing with it here, like say I'm going to get him to crunch or something, uh, I might squeeze this a bit and that kind of expands the top bit and then his head kind of just pops off which you know it's a mild annoyance let's say anyway so there's a bit of a paint thing here which actually didn't happen before i didn't only, only notice this now so maybe this is you know one of the other cons i mentioned about rubber so i mentioned it might crease but maybe painting uh, or the paint decoloring is another potential concern if you've got storm collectibles and you've had them for a good while let's say you've got an old mortal combat figure let me know how that kind of how the rubber holds up over the you know the years let's say because i, I don't want to keep buying storm collectibles if it just kind of let's say this gets worse for example anyway return to articulation then. so you can move his head down and then up and then side to side and then left and right the neck articulation is lower down in the actual rubber bit itself so it looks pretty natural uh, which is a good thing too then going towards his arms so he can move his arms all the way around hopefully his arms won't pop off for me and bring them out like so so he can do his tiger shot nicely and of course he can do his tiger uppercut nicely as well he can't fold his arms in an x too close to his chest because his chest is quite beefy um, so this is the best he can do which you know it's not bad actually it's not bad but i'd prefer a little bit closer but you know what again because of his chest size it's what you're going to get so can't can't get everything perfect i suppose but general articulation from the shoulders is pretty good he's got the bicep swivel there and then the elbow like so giving you a look at the elbow joint it, itself as well i guess because this is a bigger figure it just stands out a bit more to me when it's bent i'm not a huge fan of the elbow joint or the knee joint which i'll get into in just a minute too so you can twist like so Lean, so you can again you can get tiger shot uh, tiger uppercut uh, nicely plus his you know various kind of kicks as well that you can do you get a lot of gaps though that's what i mean with his head flying off so i'm going to just leave his head right there so you get a lot of gaps here again this is rubber then it goes to hard mode down here uh get a bit a lot of gap if you crunch him forward quite a lot and bring it back get a fair bit of gap as well um but actually that's because it's been stuck there so if you just rem rem uh, maneuver it a bit, you can tend to cover it up decently, but it's something to be mindful of. And he's got a twist over there, which is nice. Mine was pretty stiff out of the box, so it's loosened up. So it's pretty good overall right now. Returning to the rubber shorts at this section, you get a huge gaps 
over here, which I'm not a huge fan of, but what can you do? Got a twist here, and he lifts his leg up. The joint's a bit stiff, so it splits like so. And about that far with the splits, side splits. Uh, sometimes when I do this, that leg that popped off earlier pops off again. Twist there. Uh, oh, there we go, the leg popped off. Just uh, put that back on. So this leg on mine does come off uh, semi-frequently, I would say. Um, not to the point where I'm super annoyed with it, but it's, like I said, mildly inconvenient. Then he has a twist at the knee. Uh, sorry, at the thigh, right there. This is the bit that I don't like on this version of Sagat. I way prefer it the way SH Figuarts did it, because this was a loose plastic piece, and it just kind of looked a lot better, um, in my opinion. Then you got the knee bend, which... When you look at it straight ahead, it is pretty uh, gross looking. Uh, the SH figure arts wasn't so great either because that ended up looking like a, you know, a Werther's original or something. On the side, it's not as bad. But again, maybe because it's a larger figure. He's got no twist at the calf or anything. And then down to the foot, like so. And then the toes. So that's his articulation. It's pretty standard. I can and have got him into a few of his poses. Um, I'll kind of demonstrate that quickly for you. So just to kind of illustrate about his head popping off, you see this is where it na naturally sits, the rubber chest, you could say. So I have to kind of squeeze this down, like so. Anyway, so let's get him into tiger uppercut. Uh, probably. Then put a leg up. And then basically, Tiger uppercut. I'm going to put him sideways because you know he's too tall to fit. Um, that this is where my problem was with a lot of the storm collectibles. They look great uh, in stationary and uh, pretty non-dynamic poses. Once you start posing them into the more acrobatic fighting poses, like his tiger uppercut, tiger knee especially, then it can be tricky. It can be done. Here's some pictures to kind of illustrate what I've done with him. But it's a bit of effort. I didn't find him as fun to pose as I did the SH Fig Arts. Um, and some of the poses, I just feel like he just looks a bit too stiff. Um, not just him. It's just how I feel about Storm Collectibles uh, figures in general. They aesthetically, when you, again, if you had him in his neutral standing position, he looks so good. Ryu, same thing. A lot of the more combat stuff, same thing. It's just once you start playing with them into those other poses, you kind of have to play around with angles a lot to get them to look nice and cover up, cover up a lot of the gaps or make them look pretty dynamic without looking pretty like stiff and awkward. So that that's the main thing that kind of puts me off of the Storm Collectibles. But, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure how or how far I'm going to take buying or collecting or investing into Storm Collectibles stuff. Um, but with Sagat, I'm pretty, you know, I'm, there's a lot to like. Definitely a lot to like. But those posing things really kind of annoy me. It's It's... Just wasn't as fun to pose as the SH Fig Arts, which I'm going to bring out right now. By the way, I didn't mention the size of this guy. He's like 23 centimeters. He's a he's a big dude. Very, very big dude. Um, I don't know how well he scales with, say, the Ryu uh, figure or anything like that because I don't have them. Uh, but here's the SH Fig Arts one. Uh, just to kind of show you how, yeah, he dwarfs the SH Fig Arts one. Sculpt-wise, the um, Storm Collectibles uh, is just superior skin tone is superior uh, obviously this one has a lot of complaints for this one right here has a lot of complaints for being an oompa loompa orange and just not very very accurate looking uh, which is fair which is totally fair i think it's one of those things your eyes adjust to this and then you kind of forget that it's so orange but in comparison yeah it's pretty clear that this guy is super super tan uh, too much too much sunny d right um but yeah i think overall I, I would prefer this one, for sure. I've just been collecting SH Figure Arts as it was my chosen Street Fighter line. But this one is just so much better looking overall. Right? When, when someone says, you know, hey, we're going to make a Street Fighter Saga action figure, right? This is probably what you had in mind of the end result, right? Not this guy. So, yeah, I, I like this a lot. Let's just say generally, I like Storm version a lot. I do like this one too. You know, I found this one way more fun to pose and just more comfortable posing this. And I just didn't, 
you know, I didn't really worry too much about this one. It just, I just felt I had much more flexibility uh, and range of um, articulation with this guy. Storm, not so much. It just kind of, I was honestly getting a little bit like, ah, why can't I just play with the uh, the SH figures, which I did do briefly. Um, but again, when you do get this guy posed, he doesn't look too bad. I think a lot of it is going to come down to how and where you've got either row displayed as well. So if you've got a whole Street Fighter or some random kind of setup, uh, good lighting and whatever, then he's probably going to look fine. If you've got him in his neutral pose, like I mentioned before, he's going to look super good. But if you've got him in other poses, you may just kind of be like, eh, nah, not, not so much. Um, that's just my opinion of it. I, you know, some people are just going to prefer this guy flat out. Others are going to prefer this one. Probably though, and I'm going to say majority are going to go with the Storm Collectibles. So I've had to, I've had a good time overall, I would say, with the Storm Collectibles. Again, this is the first Storm Collectibles figure that I've owned and opened, period. So it's been an interesting experience for me to kind of um, try something new, uh, especially because I'm so used to SH Figure Arts, Muffex, and Revotech stuff. So seeing what Storm offer is interesting i'm curious how things go with say uh you know they've got e honda coming out i don't know if i'll get him he does look interesting um again the scale of storm collector was very very different the materials are different again like i said because a rubber chest for example i'm curious if the other figures do that i'm assuming so i'm very curious to check out say kazuya from tekken 7 of theirs i know they're doing soul caliber now and they've also got uh king a version of king coming out again from tekken which I'm actually quite interested in depending on which version of King or which look they go with. So yeah, Storm Collectibles, they are slowly slowly rising in, in my um radar, you could say. So I I I don't know. I I I have uh, you know I have got a kill figure as well and I do have Violent Ken, uh which I bought at the same time as this. So those I will check out too. But yeah, I, I mean I'm rambling totally. It's just because this is a very, very new experience for me with storm and i i don't know like i like it enough but they're also quite big and they 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 go for like 80 95 pounds or more depending on which character it is now so you know they take up space they're just quite expensive too then again web exclusive sh figures aren't always cheap either so there's a lot of things that i'm kind of playing or mulling in my in the back of my mind that i'm like do i want to go back and collect more storm collectibles say for example the street fighter 5 uh, Ryu or even um, Hot Ryu version, the variants that they've got, because uh, sometimes I can be a sucker for the variants as well. Uh, I mean, like I said, this guy looks really, really good. Generally speaking, this guy looks super good. You know, Guile is even tempting as well. I like Guile, but the figure looks really, really tempting. So, I, but can I pony up eighty pounds for it? I think it is for for, for Guile. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to collect too many line, different lines of action figures for the same IP. That's the dilemma I'm in. Um, you know, posting on Reddit as well, there's a lot of people that are, you know, with Storm. There's a lot that also SH figures because they just want to get six inch scale figures that tie in with, say, I don't know, Smash Bros. Smash Bros. line that they're trying to complete. I know he's not in Smash, but just an example I'm saying. Um, but then you've got others that are really into fighting games that want Street Fighter and a Mortal Kombat and, and a Tekken and now King of Fighters, Soul Calibur and whatever else they're going to do. So there's a lot of reasons that Storm, you know, to kind of pull that way, let's say. Uh, and I don't know what SH Figure Arts are planning. This is the last figure that, that's, that's been released for SH Figure Arts Street Fighter line. I don't know if they're going to plan to do that. Obviously, with COVID happening, everything's kind of up in the air. But I don't know how successful that line has been uh, in general for them. So many of them were web exclusive as well. Um, there's figures I do want to see, characters I do want to see from the SH Figure Arts line, and definitely, of course, from Storm Collectibles too, um, just because I like those characters, for example, Karen or, or Guy. It doesn't matter who does it, but I'll be interested because you don't get figures of them a lot. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of pull uh, of that Storm are doing for me personally. Um, so I guess you could expect to see some more Storm Collectibles. I don't know how many, though. I'm not sure if I'm going to go all in with this right now. Anyway, with that said, I think my opinion is very clear. I I, I really like this figure. It looks really, really great. Art articulation is a bit of a pain, but nothing's perfect. So I've rambled a lot on my opinion on this. It's 
one of those things that I'm just going to have to uh, sleep on uh, even even longer uh, and decide. But if you are in a position like me as well that you love Street Fighter, but you can't pick, um, you know, which line to go with, I would probably just say go with this for now. Go with the Storm because they've still announced new figures coming out. Like I said, e Honda, they've got a new IP coming out. They seem to be much more committed and much more swifter with their releases with it. Uh, and overall, they have a more traditional look that you might expect from a Street Fighter figure, whereas the SH figure arts tend to be a little bit more stylized, a little bit more uh, their own thing, not really conforming to any one particular version of the game. Uh, it's more like it's original almost, but inspired by. Um, so, yeah, this is probably your best bet, but look at the size of this guy. You know, Sagat is a tall guy anyway, but their scale is 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 different. So, I've rambled a lot. Thank you very, very much if you've uh, stuck by and listened to me ramble all this time about Storm and SH Figarts and Sagat in general. It's it's a hard one for me personally um, to decide on which one to commit with. If I had space and money, I, I wouldn't have the issue. I'd get, keep going with both. Um, but I will definitely, like I said, do an unboxing for the Kyo figure and the Violent Kent at the very least. And then from there, let's see what happens. Let's see. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my channel for any others. If you like this video, tiger uppercut that like button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.